Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I've figured out this mother freaking sound situation. I don't know why every time I get on these videos, the sound is up and down and up and down and now I figured it out. When you have a microphone and you can't hear yourself in the microphone while you're talking, you're either gonna be too loud, too low or whatever. And I have this um, Yeti microphone now and there's a way to plug up your um, headphones so that you can hear yourself. And the sound is going to be a whole lot better now. I hope you guys appreciate it because I'm doing it for you guys. Because me, I mean, I want to be able for you guys to hear me, okay? Anyway, we do not have a teen mom review to do today. So I'm going to have to be creative. And so I'm going to give you a bonus true crime recap. And we're doing an episode of Deadly Women. Oh, this woman did something so hateful, so evil. And not only was one life lost, two lives were lost. Let's get into the story of Cherie Miller. Kansas City, the year 2000. Barry Cassidy is having the time of his life. One weekend, the wild woman he met online. Cherie Miller presented herself as a wealthy businesswoman in Flint, Michigan, and that she was in the auto parts business. Cherie Miller was 27 years old, and the fact that she's married just added excitement to this tryst with Jerry. So Cherie told Jerry that her husband was involved with the mafia, and she also let Jerry know that she couldn't leave her husband because he knew too much. Jerry really didn't seem to care much about the situation of the fact that Cherie was married. He had been divorced and he lost his own job in law enforcement. He was pretty much down on his luck. Cherie goes back home to Michigan and their online love affair continues to flourish. This was a sordid internet affair that launched into internet discussion, lots of texts, lots of love letters, love conversation, back and forth over a period of several months. So to gain more control over Jerry, to get him to do her bidding, Cherie lies to Jerry with pictures in a fake pregnancy test saying to him that she's pregnant. And not only did Cherie lie to Jerry about being pregnant, she lied about being pregnant with twins. So Jerry falls into Cherie's trap and he believes that she's pregnant with his babies. So one day Cherie tells Jerry that her husband is a violent gangster and she's taken pictures of fake bruises that she's put on herself to show Jerry what he did to her. So Jerry is pretty much believing everything that Cherie is telling him and Cherie has her goal set in mind. She is positioning herself to be able to control this man. So Cherie sends Jerry a message that says her husband be her specifically so that the twins could be killed. And that's when she sent the email with the bruises to show Jerry. And this really distresses Jerry and makes him very much angry. So the last message that Cherie sent Jerry sent him over the edge. And he called her and let her know that he was coming to Flint, Michigan. So chatting online, Cherie and Jerry plotted every single moment of Bruce's murder. Wow, what a jump from messages and fake pictures. Now we're plotting murder. That's crazy. Okay, so here comes the date of November 9th, 1999. And Jerry actually shows up at Bruce's workplace in the, I guess, the automotive place or whatever. And he ends up shooting Bruce dead with a 20 gauge shotgun. Well, the police were baffled at first. They thought it was a robbery going bad. It went on for some time where they didn't know exactly what happened to Bruce. And then, and then the truth dawns on Jerry that he was tricked into murdering an innocent man. Jerry's final act was to take revenge on the woman that destroyed his life, Cherie. Jerry actually left all of the documents inside of her briefcase, their text messages, everything, I guess their email messages, and he, he leaves it open in front of him, and then he takes the shotgun and he shoots himself. And Jerry takes his own life. The details that Jerry left in the briefcase was basically the planning and the plot, kill Bruce. So Cherie's plot landed her in jail and subsequently landed her in prison. Cherie Miller was convicted of conspiracy to commit murder. She is sentenced to life in prison. 
Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.